we'll be discussing lacrimal gland tumors. Uh, we'll be discussing pleomorphic lacrimal gland adenoma and lacrimal gland carcinoma. Starting with uh, pleomorphic lacrimal gland adenoma. Uh, pleomorphic adenoma or benign mixed cell tumor is the most common epithelial tumor of the lacrimal gland and is derived from the ducts and the secretory elements including myoepithelial cells. On histopathology, the inner layer of the cells form glandular tissue that may be associated with the squamous differentiation and keratin production. The outer cells undergo metaplastic changes leading to the formation of myxoid tissue. It can be seen here on the histopathological slide. Uh, the keratin uh, pearls are characteristic of this uh, change. Uh, the inner tissue going through the uh, uh, characteristic changes while the outer cells undergo metaplastic changes. Uh, young to middle-aged adults are predominantly affected uh, group. Diagnosis is based on symptoms, signs and investigation. Uh, patient presents with painless, slowly progressive proctosis or swelling in the superlator eyelid, usually of more than a year's duration. Old photographs may reveal an abnormality many years prior to the presentation. Upon examination, uh, an orbital lobe tumor, uh, it presents as a smooth, firm, non-tender mass in the lacrimal gland fossa with intronasal dystopia, as it is uh, seen in the uh, picture here. Uh, the tumor is present on the right side and it is the orbital lobe tumor. For the palpebral uh, lobe tumor, uh, as it is less common and tends to grow anteriorly causing the upper lid swelling without dystopia, uh, which may be visible to inspection as well. As you can see, there is no dystopia here uh, and it is uh, upon lid aversion, it is easily uh, uh, seen uh, on inspection. Uh, on imaging, uh, CT shows a round or oval mass with a smooth outline and indentation but not destruction of the lacrimal gland fossa uh, as it is shown in the figure here. Uh, the right side uh, shows uh, uh, orbital lobe lesion. Now, treatment involves surgical excision if the diagnosis is strongly suspected. It is wise to avoid prior bi biopsy uh, to prevent tumor seeding into the adjacent orbital tissue. Although this may not always be possible in the context of diagnostic uncertainty, tumors of the palpebral lobe are usually resected along with the margin of a normal tissue through an anterior uh, transseptal orbitotomy. Uh, those of the orbital portion are excised uh, through a lateral orbitotomy. Uh, first, uh, te the temporalis muscle is incised uh, as shown in the figure. Then uh, the underlying bone is drilled for subsequent wiring. Uh, then the lateral orbital wall is removed and the tumor is excised, uh, including a margin of the adjacent tissue and uh, periorbita. As you can see here, and then the lateral orbital wall and uh, temporalis muscle are repaired. Uh, the prognosis is excellent provided excision is completed and without disruption of the capsule. Incomplete excision or preliminary incisional biopsy may result in seeding of tumor into the adjacent tissue with recurrences and occasionally malignant changes. Now starting with the lacrimal gland carcinoma. Uh, it is a rare tumor that carries a high morbidity and mortality. In order of frequency, the main histological uh, types are adenoid cystic, uh, which occurs in about 50% of the cases, pleomorphic adenocarcinoma, uh, mucoepidermoid, and squamous cell. Uh, histopathology shows nests of basaloid cells with numerous mitosis. The peak incidence is in middle-aged adults. Uh, you can see on histopathology, there are uh, certain solid and then cribriform uh, basaloid cells. Now, patients uh, present with 
a malignant mixed uh, cell tumor uh, in three main clinical settings. Uh, first is after incomplete or piecemeal excision of a benign pleomorphic adenoma followed by one or more recurrences over a period of several years with eventual malignant transformation as a long-standing proptosis or swollen upper lid that suddenly starts to increase uh, without a previous history of pleomorphic adenoma as a rapidly growing lacrimal gland mass usually of several months duration. So the history is shorter than that of a benign tumor and pain is a frequent feature of malignancy but may also occur with inflammatory lesions. Upon uh, examination, uh, a mass in the lacrimal area uh, causing intranasal dystopia is seen as uh, in the figure above uh, in the right eye. Uh, posterior extension with involvement of superior orbital fissure may give rise to epibulbar congestion, proptosis, periorbital edema and ophthalmophagia. Hypoesthesia in the region supplied by the lacrimal nerve is also observed. Optic disc swelling and choroidal folds are seen. Upon investigation, CT scan shows a globular lesion with irregular serrated edges, uh, often with contiguous uh, erosion or invasions of bone. Uh, biopsy uh, is necessary to establish the histological diagnosis. Subsequent management depends on the extent of tumor invasion of adjacent uh, structures, uh, which is seen on imaging. Neurological assessment is mandatory because of adenoid uh, or adenocystic carcinoma exhibiting perineural spread and may extend into the cavernous sinus. Now in the CT scan here, uh, a clear irregular mass is seen in the right eye. You can see uh, the mass is here and also the bony invasion is quite clear here in this tissue. Uh, and uh, which indicates the metastasis. Uh, now, coming towards treatment, uh, it involves excision of the tumor and adjacent tissues. Extensive tumors may require orbital exenteration or midfacial resection, but the prognosis of for life is frequently poor. Radiotherapy combined with local resection may prolong life to re and reduce pain. Adjuvant intra-arterial chemotherapy or brachytherapy may be utilized in some cases. So that's it with the electronal gland tumors. If you like the lecture, please uh, click on the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.